the name of this molecule? Water. That's right. What's its hybridization? SP3. Because it's got two lone pairs. So what should be its orbital geometry? Tetrahedral. So it should look a lot like these pictures. Well, I'll put one hydrogen at one corner of the tetrahedron and another hydrogen at another corner of the tetrahedron. But that's all the atoms I've got. So what am I going to put at this corner of the tetrahedron? A pair. What type of orbital is that going to be in? SP3. Yeah, because that's all we got. All we got is SP3. And what do I put up here? Another SP3 orbital. With another lone pair. OK, good. All right, um, what do you think about the bond angle here? Um, should it be 107, bigger than 107, or less than 107? Less than, 104.5. Oh, you remember that, good. Because now that there's, there's two very unsociable lone pairs, and these are going to cluster even closer to each other. And again, we can't, even though the orbital geometry is tetrahedral, that's not the molecular geometry. Because the molecular geometry just depends on where the atoms are. And there's only three atoms here. So we need a new name for this molecular geometry. Okay. Yeah. Not a very elegant name. But it's logical because the three atoms form a bent set of three atoms. Sometimes this is called angular, so angular or bent. Um, now, this is actually quite interesting because if you hadn't learned this whole theory, what would a naive person predict would be the bond angle? Well, I think a naive person would predict that water looks like this. A naive person might predict that it's just linear, with one hydrogen pointing to the left and one hydrogen pointing to the right and one lone pair above and one lone pair below, and this would give us a bond angle of 180 degrees. So this theory really is telling us something that we would not have expected. This is why it's so important to realize that the orbital geometry here is still tetrahedral. So these two hydrogens are still in the two remaining corners of the tetrahedron, which means they're not linear from each other, but they're at a kind of tetrahedral angle um, that's pretty close to 109.5. This is important because it means that these two bond dipoles don't cancel each other out. So water is a, a polar molecule. If water was linear, these two dipoles would cancel each other out and it would not be a polar molecule. And that would change a lot of stuff. OK, good. So we have to remember that when the orbital geometry is tetrahedral, there's three different types of molecular geometry. It could be tetrahedral molecular geometry, trigonal planar molecular geometry, or bent molecular geometry. So people tend to get that, those things confused with each other. Um, boron is pretty far to the left in the periodic table. In fact, it's so far to the left that, it can, um, that when it's uncharged, it actually has an incomplete octet and no lone pairs. So boron, this does not have any lone pairs. So what would be its hybridization? There's three attached atoms and no lone pairs. This would be sp2. That's right. So what's the orbital geometry? Trigonal planar. So we could write that. I guess I'll write it. Like this. This is a trigonal planar where it's just like parallel to the board like this. Um, and if I drew this realistically, you wouldn't even be able to see this fluorine because it would be blocked by this fluorine. But I'm drawing these slightly askew so you can see them both. Um, what type of orbital is this? Sp2. And this? Sp2. And this? Sp2. That's right. So what else does it have? A p. And where is the p orbital? Perpendicular to this. And what's in the p orbital? Well, in this case, nothing. It would be an empty p orbital because this has an incomplete octet. Okay. Um, so uh, this would be a trigonal planar arrangement. Um, it's possible for something trigonal planar in orbital geometry not to be trigonal planar in, in molecular geometry, but that only that would come up in OCHEM. So this is all we need to focus on for this. And this is so far to the left in the periodic table um, that it can have uh, no lone pairs and only be attached to two atoms. So what would be the hybridization here? Sp. Right, because again, we should just have memorized this doesn't have any lone pairs. So it's only got two attached atoms and no lone pairs. So hybridization like this. Well, what would its geometry be? Um, linear. Well, 
What other orbitals does this have? Two. Yeah, where are they? So one would be like this. And where's the other one? Coming out. Yeah, coming into and out of the board. So that would be an example of this. Uh, what would be the bond angle here? Yeah, and here it was 120. Okay, now earlier we talked about sigma and pi bonds. And we talked about how to figure out whether something's a sigma or a pi bond. But we didn't talk about what sigma and pi bonds are. And that's something else you need to know, just like you need to know what hybridization really means. Um, sigma bond comes from a head-to-head -head overlap. So this would be a sigma bond. Between two p orbitals. There's actually lots of different ways to make sigma bonds. These are all considered the same. Suppose that somebody looked at this bond from the side. Well, do you see that if you looked at this bond from the side, you would see something that looks like an S orbital. You would just kind of see a circular cross section. If you looked at it from in front, you would see something very complicated. But from the side, you're just going to kind of see a circular cross section. Well, if you looked at any of these from the side, you would just see a kind of circular cross section that looks like an S. That's where sigma comes from. Sigma is the Greek letter for S. So a sigma bond is one that looks like an S orbital from the side. All right, so these all would be um, sigma bonds. Um, there's uh, other ways to make sigma bonds, too. So there's a lot of sigma bonds. There's only one way to make a pi bond. Do you remember, how do you make a pi bond? Isn't it when, like, like two pi bonds going, like, this way together? Probably got the right thing in your mind. That's good. <laughs> now. A pi bond can't be made out of pi bonds. A pi bond is made out of p orbitals. Yes. So a pi bond is made out of the side-to-side -side overlap of p orbitals. There's many ways to get a sigma bond, but this is the only way to get a pi bond. So if you don't have a pi bond, it's got to be a sigma bond. people draw dashes here to show bonding interactions between these two, between these lobes. But these are not two different pi bonds, they're just one pi bond, because remember both of these lobes are part of the same p orbital. So I've drawn two p orbitals um, and one pi bond. Um, by the way, if you looked at this from the side, it would look like a p orbital, wouldn't it? And that's where the pi comes from, because pi is the Greek letter for p. So when you look at a pi bond from the side, it looks like a p orbital. Whereas if you look from a, at a sigma bond from the side, it looks like an s orbital. So we use the Greek letter for s for this, and the Greek letter for p for this. Um, who's going to be stronger, a sigma bond or a pi bond? Pi bond. Sigma bonds are stronger because they're actually overlapping. Notice that here, these are not actually overlapping, right? Um, they're actually separated in space. Whereas here, we actually have this area of um, interact, um, this o actual area of overlap. So sigma bonds are actually stronger. Remember we said earlier that the first type of bond that we form between any two atoms is a sigma. And we only kind of form pi bonds as kind of plan B. Well, this is kind of an explanation for that. The atoms prefer to form the stronger bonds first. So 
So we've learned about three different types of things, which students tend to get confused. We've learned about unhybridized orbitals. S and P are unhybridized orbitals. And we've learned about hybridized orbitals, like sp3, sp2, and sp. Those are hybridized orbitals. And now we've learned about a third thing, which are bonds, sigma bonds and pi bonds. Sigma bonds and pi bonds are made out of the overlap of orbitals. Bonds are made out of the overlap of orbitals, but they're not the same thing. So we wouldn't want to call this a p bond. It's a pi bond. We wouldn't want to call this a pi orbital. It's a p orbital. 